This is the Zero Swift P1. It was launched on Indiegogo for just about $200, making it by far the cheapest gimbal on the market for hybrid cameras. But is it worth it? Well, no, quite frankly. Now, I'm not much of a gimbal user myself. I had the DJI Ronin S for a while, but uh, I ended up selling it after about two months. So when Siru asked me if I'd be willing to review their gimbal, I was initially quite hesitant, but I took a look at it. Now what ended up piquing my interest was the advertised time-lapse function. Since I had a trip to Iceland planned, I, having the ability to create some dynamic time-lapses would have been a great idea. Now unfortunately I wasn't able to receive it in time. Once I got the gimbal, I couldn't get the time-lapse function to work. So I emailed the representative that I had been in contact with to no avail. So I emailed another representative who told me that the time-lapse function was actually only meant for smartphones, which wasn't clear from any of the marketing. Now, Siru had two different gimbals in their campaign. One called the M1, which is a smartphone gimbal, and the P1, which is aimed at mirrorless and compact cameras. Now it does also come with a little holder for smartphones, but really they aim this one at, at hybrid cameras. So ha having one of the main features being only available on smartphones it felt a bit weird. And when it comes to stabilization, it it does a decent work, but panning and tilting can be a bit jerky. However, it has some serious issues with keeping the horizon. At times the gimbal tilts slightly to the left for no apparent reason, even if the gimbal is weighed in properly and calibrated. In my honest opinion, the negatives by far outweigh the positives, being that it's cheap and that it comes with three different cables to work with all the major camera brands, so I can't really recommend this to anyone. Now, if you're searching for a gimbal and the $400 options are just too expensive for you, I would recommend you get some sort of Steadicam type of stabilizer instead. You can find a decent one for around 50 bucks and with some practice you can pull off a lot smoother movement than you can with a gimbal in this price point. So that's gonna be it for me, thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful and uh, I'll see you in the next one.